What's up learners? In this video, we're going to take a look at the exact steps that I use to become a data scientist in a challenging environment. And when I say challenging, I mean really challenging. I'm talking about learning and misprocrastination, self-doubt, constant electricity outages, poor internet connection, etc. All these frustrations that can hinder learning. I was still able to achieve my goal of becoming a data scientist. So let us explore how I did it. And if I can do it, you can as well. But first thing first, a little bit about my academic background. I graduated with a degree in business and information technology. Though I was exposed to some technology tools, the course focused more on some business subjects and applications like accounting, finance, HR, and entrepreneurship. So there was little coding and mathematics involved as compared to a traditional computer science degree. Whilst in uni, I was really frustrated at the prevalent lack of quality, equipment, and infrastructure in place to meet my desire of acquiring practical skills. So I knew I needed to do something about it, but I didn't know exactly what. So one day, while aimlessly scrolling through Facebook, I came across this video titled Why Everybody Should Learn to Code. And it featured big and influential people like Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and William. And as soon as I started watching it, I was hooked. I mean, it even featured a popular quote by Steve Jobs, which says, everybody should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. And I was like, what? It teaches you how to think? And boom, this prompted me to research more about computer coding and kickstarted my learning journey. I'm a huge football fan. Okay, let's get this out already. Come on, Chelsea. I mean, a football fan, you spend your time arguing a lot, especially if you're watching a football match with some friends or opponents. A popular age-old argument in football is who's the good between Messi or Ronaldo? Aha, uh -huh. you probably decide based on who you support or admire. But to answer this question, football experts or fans turn to their stats, number of records, goals, assists, titles won, etc. It's not uncommon to see a football fan browsing through the internet just to win an argument to prove a point. I've always wondered how these records are collected, stored, and accessed so easily. So one day, I was browsing through the internet, I came across this article by Harvard Business Review titled Data Scientist, the sexiest job of the 21st century. I'm sure you would have been captivated by the title too. So I read the article and this prompted me to research more about what data science is, what are these applications, what is the job market. And I learned a ton, but most importantly, what really captured my attention was the many applications of data science. I mean, healthcare, education, agriculture, transportation, e-commerce, energy, you name it. Data science can pretty much be applied in every domain where data is collected. And moreover, my research in data science also helped me realize one fact, that these football experts use data science techniques to come up with these statistics about players, clubs, or leagues. So after reading a lot about data science, I finally decided that I was going to be a data scientist no matter what. This is where my journey of self study data science began. Before starting any course in data science, I'd already started learning Python. No, not the giant snake, but a high level programming language because of how easy it is to learn and the straightforward syntax. Now, this was all YouTube, by the way, and it first became a one stop resource center. Now, my beginner knowledge in Python proved instrumental in starting my first structured data science course, which was applied data science at Wakwant University. Astonishingly, this course is entirely free and it uses an applied learning approach to deliver its content. My friends who know me well know that I'm a sucker for applied learning. I mean, don't spit out theories to me, show me how. I develop a ton of skills like working with Python libraries like Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib to explore data. I'm also developing an in-depth understanding of how SQLs are applied in data science and some introduction to machine learning. After completing this course, I felt like I was equipped enough to start applying my skills. But the question was, where? I was still in a low-income country where the job market didn't even know the meaning of data science. However, there was a newly found government institution called the Directorate of Science, Technology and Innovation, which was led by an innovative leader called Dr. David Senger, who was from MIT and Harvard, and he made sure that data was at the center of what the organization does. Now, before venturing into data science, I'd already identified DSTI as the place for my internship. I just needed to develop the skills and wait for the right opportunity. And there it came in the form of a hackathon hosted by two Facebook engineers and organized by DSTI. Now, we were given this flight API and our task was to plot flight movement from Seattle to Billingham on the USA map. Sounds simple, right? But I'd never worked in an API before. 
I didn't even know where to start. So I spent the whole night scouring through YouTube just to find resources. And I finally did it and submitted it around 4 a.m. to one of the engineers. So that morning I was asked to present my work, which I barely did because of how tired I was due to the sleepless night. But it turned out I was the only one who completed the task. And little did I know that the lead data scientist at DSTI was in the audience. So I presented my work after the whole session she called me outside, asked about my interests, career plans, all that kind of stuff. And interestingly, the work that I did was Geographic Information System or GIS related. And it turned out we were doing this GIS project and she asked if I would be willing or interested in interning in a data team. And of course I was like, for sure, dream come true. Of course, I went to some intense interview process. Some questions we asked about data structures in Python, problem solving data and some aptitude tests. But alas, two weeks later, I started my internship. I was placed in the IGS project, which is a location-based intelligent portal that helps government institutions know where their key assets are. Overall, my internship was intense, stimulating, and a lot of fun. And with the help of my supervisor, I utilized my skills really efficiently. But I also learned a lot about my skills gap, especially in GIS, and I also needed to learn a few more advanced data science and machine learning concepts. So I joined the Africa Geoportal service, which gives you free access to ArcGIS Online, a premium GIS tool to build maps, and dashboards. I took a lot of courses there, especially in building maps, generating insight from different map layers, and also working with different file types like shapefiles and GeoJSON. I also came across the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate Program and the opportunity to be certified by IBM, one of the leading AI and machine learning companies in the world, was hard to shun. So I took all the 10 courses in the professional certificate and it took me a year to finish due to the demands of my work. But I learned a lot, especially around building and deploying machine learning models using IBM Watson Studio. I even built and deployed a SpaceX Falcon 9 landing prediction model and it was a lot of fun. I will leave the link in the description below. And here is the kicker for me. My internship experience rewarded me with an entry role as a junior data scientist. And it was a no-brainer. I accepted as soon as I received the offer. But overall, the work that I did, the relationship that I built, and the trust that my supervisor had in my output all influenced my decision to continue. I would have never achieved the goal of becoming a data scientist if I didn't practice what I learned a lot. Data science is a very practical, complex, and sometimes overwhelming domain. Individually, statistics, mathematics, and computer programming are complex and tricky subjects. But when you combine them all to create a new vocation, that's a whole new complexity. But what really turned this complexity into familiarity and simplicity is deliberate practice. What helped me when I was starting out was that I discovered this course, learning how to learn, powerful mental tools to help you master tough subjects by Barbara Oakley. I even read her book, A Mind for Numbers. Both her book and this course completely blew my mind and changed my approach of learning. I was introduced to a tool called the Pomodoro Technique, which is a time management tool discovered by Francesco Cerolo. How it basically works is that you decide on the tasks you want to do, turn off all distraction. This could be mobile phones, computer, and the likes. And you set a timer for 25 minutes and you perform your task. You can do multiple Pomodoros per day. This was a game changer for me as it helped me stay focused and practice deliberately. Another technique that I use to learn and practice is writing five lines of code every day. Something that I picked up from watching Nicholas Reynolds' video and really helped me recall functions and methods that I use in my everyday data science workflow. Both these techniques are tied down to the concept of atomic habits, which basically means performing small, regular, and easy to do routines that leads to compound growth. I learned this from watching Ali Abdel's video. I believe he picked it up from a book called Atomic Habits by James Clare. You can check it out as well, but trust me, it will completely transform your productivity life. My learning journey has been fruitful and I've seen a lot of improvement in my life and career as a whole, but it has not been short of challenges. Some of these challenges are still prevalent today, especially challenges that I have no control over. But I remember coming across a quote by a Zimbabwe entrepreneur that I personally admire and follow called Stride Masiwa. And this quote completely changed the way I view challenges. And he said, we do not fight the condition we fight in the condition. For me, what this means, there are stuff that are obviously not in our control. For instance, where I come from, you do not have control of whether you have constant electricity or not, or whether you have faster internet. So it's not something you can change. However, you can learn to navigate around these challenges and still succeed. And for me, it's about identifying what time of the day the internet will be faster and making use of it, or making effective use of electricity when I have it, charging or recharging all my devices and all. So that's the control that I have, and it's about utilizing that effect Effectively. I also used to procrastinate a lot and most of the time I would aimlessly just scroll through social media, watching videos and people's posts and feeling bad about myself. But the Pomodoro technique and the consistent habit of writing five lines of code every day really helped me overcome 
procrastination and increase my productivity if you want to get started in data science or any other tech area by the way if you want to explore my top eight skills in low-income countries i will link to the video right up there then you can start by researching the career that you want to venture into brief background about it what are some of its applications and impact what is the current job market etc just to whet your appetite and if you decide it is something that you want to do then stick to it also don't try to learn everything at once start from the fundamentals and focus on it this will help you strengthen your learning before you move to the next stage next you can explore or start taking structured courses online there are a lot of professional certificates today especially from google microsoft ibm meta etc once you're doing that you can also start developing your personal projects and hosting it on github or any other platform you prefer you can as well use twitter or linkedin to talk about the nuances of your project next design a good resume and start looking for opportunities if you feel ready to apply your skills you can also explore remote work opportunities there are a ton of them out there today however recruiters would like to see and interact with your project portfolio more often than you just telling them what you're good at that's why it's important for you to build projects and showcase your work you can also explore working for clients you know doing freelance gigs doing real world projects will really set you apart and make you a strong candidate if by any way you need my help don't hesitate to reach out i will leave the links to my handles in the description below so feel free to reach out at any time and i will definitely reply also don't forget subscribe like and share thank you very much happy learning